Hello all and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy, a show of hope and inspiration. I want to encourage you to check out my memoir, Amazon bestseller Chaos to Clarity, Seeing the Signs and Breaking the Cycles. I share my story of childhood trauma, addiction and recovery to help you, the reader, to break free of generational cycles, bad habits, grow in spirituality, and I offer a blueprint of what has worked for me in sobriety. It is a quick read, but a life-changing read for those that are drinking too much, fighting addiction, or in recovery. Now let's hear about my incredible guest. I first speak with Gabby Reese, the co-founder and chief brand ambassador of Laird Superfood, podcast host of The Gabby Reese Show, an author, professional athlete, and speaker. Gabby shares with us what it is like being a female entrepreneur, her new superfood line, and how she's helping others through her podcast. Next, I will sit down with global thought leader and author of Claim Your Confidence, Lydia Finette. Lydia says confidence isn't something that we are born with, but rather something we learn. She will give us some insight and tips on how we can become more confident and step out of our comfort zone. Lastly, I speak with Najat Binyahia. She's gonna share with us about her skincare line, Lunalis. I cannot wait to share these amazing products with you and share what makes it so different. It is part of my daily skin routine and I absolutely love it. Now let's meet these incredible guests and move towards a life of happiness. Joining me now is Gabby Reese, co-founder and chief brand ambassador of Laird Superfood, podcast host of The Gabby Reese Show, author, super athlete, and speaker. Oh my God, thank you for coming on the show, Gabby. Thank you for having me and for tolerating my technical challenges. I appreciate it. Oh goodness, <laughs> I think we all are just a technical challenge now. <laughs> It's true. I need 12 year olds standing by at all times just to fix it. You know? I agree. I agree. Oh my goodness. Well, listen, you have some new things that have been going on. I mean, you're a female entrepreneur now, along with everything else on your plate. And that the biggest thing is being a parent, right? So what has it been like, first of all, balancing it all and the journey of being an entrepreneur? You know, I think really what you start to realize is that everyone is balancing or, you know, I try to spin it to a flywheel instead of thinking of juggling and balancing so that hopefully everything is feeding everything because yeah. I feel like balancing is virtually impossible. Um, and, you know, going from professional sports in a way, I would say this, and maybe I didn't feel that way at that time. Luckily, I was on a small platform, beach volleyball. And so it actually forced me very early, even while I was playing to be an entrepreneur. And so I've had a lot of, uh, you know, non-starters, you know, mm -hmm. I think when people see certain businesses and they go, wow, they did this, but they don't realize there's sort of a graveyard of failures prior to that. Yeah. And, um, you know, working with my husband, I've been with Laird for 27 years and he's also on a small platform with big wave surfing. So we both naturally, I think go, we're a gun for hire talents as athletes. Then you sort of go, Oh, maybe, if I naturally and organically can be a business owner, that would be a really good way to go. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's butt kicks and humbling and lessons all the way around and yeah. really a really fun adventure. Absolutely. And, and looking at those failures as lessons, right? It's okay to fail. That's where you learn the most. I think in business school, especially if you're going to teach entrepreneurs, you should almost say, but, you know, short of like a 21 year old kind of tech person who maybe is just really on the cutting edge of something that can kind of hit it early, mm -hmm. that instead of looking at them as failures, that they that they actually explain to people, hey, this is going to be part of the process to arm you with the information to actually be able to pull off yeah. having a business in the first place. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they should communicate that more and, mm -hmm. and not making it harder than it needs to be, yeah. but also not getting freaked out if something goes awry. And it will, and it will. So let's talk about Laird Superfoods. Like, why Superfoods? Why was this so important for you? You know, I, I also say the other part of all of this is being, you know, doing things that are genuinely an extension of who you are, not looking at the market and go, 
oh, well, you know, this seems to be popular because then you're chasing it. Laird Superfood was born out of an organic habit that my husband was doing, looking for ways for performance in his surfing. And so uh, not an unusual practice. There was yak butter tea hundreds and thousands of years ago, putting fat in coffee. Yeah. But the other philosophy that I really appreciate about what Laird believes in is, hey, if you have a habit every day, can you do it in the best way so that accumulation supports you? So we started, he, you know, he especially, and then we went on from there, started putting things like um, adaptogens and things in the coffee that don't impact flavor, mm -hmm. but that maybe support you um, every day. And out of that, by accident, Laird Superfood was born because he would share it. And then we had a friend who was also an entrepreneur, the other co-founder, Paul Hodge. And he was like, how hard could this be to make? And there you mm -hmm. go. And there you go. So... What are some of the, the things that you like to introduce into your daily routine? For me personally, I start uh, because, you know, I, I like to think that I understand some, de you know, basic level of nutrition, mm -hmm. but I actually start with hydrating because we've been sleeping hopefully for eight hours at least, or, yeah. you know, if we can pull it or, you know, version of it. And I start with the greens that we have in water to bridge those gaps because I find it hard to kind of get that throughout the day and also even just to be hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, genuinely hyd hydrated. And then I will have uh, a coffee that's more like a mocha, <laughs> but it has adaptogens. It has lots of fat so I can perform because the caffeine's for the body, but the fat is, is for the, for the brain. But right. we have other products. We have, um, protein bars, um, and protein and things like that. And the other thing I want to say is that I didn't know that I was going to learn about ingredients like, uh, let's say for example, something called a tocopherol. Mm -hmm. So there are things that I know that we don't want in our food and right. in our brand. And so we really work hard um, to protect that so that we do the heavy lifting for the consumer and, um, and then try to get those best ingredients in whatever product that we're offering. That's fantastic. So I want to talk a little bit about your podcast. Uh, I know that this is really something important for you. And one of the things that you talk about is mental health. And that to me is just like such a priority right now. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about that, your favorite topics and maybe a favorite guest. You know, I, I come from a performance background being in sports, but what you start to realize, especially if you're living through life, it's like, Hey, the reason I really need to take care of myself is so I can be good and okay for myself and then good and okay for everybody else. Whoever, you know, if it's a partner, if it's kids, if it's your business, if it's all of it, you know, whatever that is. And so it's really taking the idea of movement and nutrition and sort of inviting people to say, hey, these are the best in class experts, scientists, nutritionists, mental health experts, professional athletes, whatever they are, and yeah. simplify it in a way that people who are really busy and don't have extra resources, whether it's time or revenue, and sort of offer them bite-sized realistic things that they can do and it doesn't become an exclusive offer. Um, you know, as far as favorite guests, I have so many. Yeah. And what I, I will say about this that I'm really excited about the podcast is whether it is a pr physical performance, nutrition, or even um, a psychiatrist from Harvard, what they're saying impacts our health are basically the same four things. Mm. It's like chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. mitochondrial dysfunction, maybe your microbiome isn't working at its best, but either way, it might show up differently in me than you, like maybe yeah. in me, it's diabetes. And so I guess what, I'm, what I wanna say is to remind people that even though it is overwhelming, that really if we can get a handle on some basic things in our health, we have a better shot at kind of performing. Mm -hmm. And then obviously that all supports our you know, the driver, the brain, yeah, the mental yeah. well-being. Um, Absolutely. And, and just re reminding people that it's their, it's their right too to feel good, you know, and sort of encouraging them to make that a priority instead of, you know, the cleaning the house and work and getting everything else done, but making your, right. you feeling good a priority. Right. It's been such a pleasure having you on. I hate that we're out of time. I wanted to talk with you about so many more things, but I, you know, what, it, just real quick, what's next for you and where can we find you? Uh, just with Gabby Reese, R-E-E-C-E. -E, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm more committed, you know, obviously Laird Superfood and the podcasts take up quite a bit of time and are a real priority. And so I'll just be digging in and, and trying to continue to do a better job there and offer things that are sort of really accessible to people, but are, you know, the best in class of what they are. 
Absolutely. But thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and good luck with everything. Aloha. Bye. After the break, we learned some tips on how to get more confident and step out of our comfort zone. Now we're going to learn about getting confident with global thought leader and author of Claim Your Confidence, Lydia Finette. Welcome to the show, Lydia. Thank you so much, Marcy. I'm so delighted to be here. This is a great subject. I'm so glad to have you on and help us with our confidence and self-esteem. So in Claim Your Confidence, you say that confidence isn't something that we're born with. And, and I get that. We have to learn that. So. How did you learn to be confident and how can someone begin their journey of getting confident if they're not? I truly believe that we all have confidence within us, but it's up to us to claim it over the course of our lives. And I truly think that that comes from putting ourselves outside of our comfort zone time and time again. Mm -hmm. I learned it as an auctioneer. So I started taking auctions when I was 24 for Christie's Auction House. And unlike art auctioneers who sit in rooms where people are there to bid on items, I'm a charity auctioneer, which means I get on stage at galas all around the world late at night trying to sell things that nobody really wants to buy. It took a lot of confidence to learn how to get up in front of a room of a ton, in times a hundred, sometimes a thousand people and learn how to engage a crowd and get over my fear of what they are thinking about me or not being able to say what I wanted to say at any particular time simply because I lost my train of thought. And I like to think that that really taught me how to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And that has been an amazing journey for me in terms of claiming my confidence. So I think everybody yeah. just needs to really think about how they can push themselves out of their comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. I've just started doing some public speaking and I'll tell you, I'm having to get comfortable with getting uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, being fearful and uncomfortable with certain situations. Like, so really, how can we start moving forward with that? I mean, yeah, so we've made the decision to do that, but how can someone really push themselves to get through that fear? I think it's all about setting a goal for yourself. Is there something that you want to do that you're scared of trying to do? Do it in a small increment. You know. I can tell you from on a larger scale, writing my first book was one of the scariest things that I've ever done in my life. And one step that I took to get there was that I told everybody that I was going to write a book. I wasn't at that time really writing a book, but I felt like if I put it out into the universe and told enough people who would hold me accountable, it would help me take those first steps towards trying it. And over time, I mean, it really took me about eight years to finally sit down and write it. But by telling people, and by having people hold me accountable, it helped me push myself towards that goal. So I would yeah. say find something small, start yeah. small and really try. You know, we always hear with exercise, sometimes it takes two weeks to get into something, but it's the smaller, smaller details that allow you to feel confident no matter what happens in your life. Yeah, I always say set those small goals because if you set the really large ones, you're gonna feel, feel so overwhelmed and you're going to fail, right? You're not gonna start. Uh, exactly. So let's talk about imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of us have felt that possibly, I know I have, that we don't deserve something. And you have a method called SLAM. I love that. So tell us about that. Well, I use SLAM as an acronym because every single time I go on stage anywhere in the world, the first thing I do is slam down my gavel. So when I was really trying to think about how I could articulate it to someone who was thinking about imposter syndrome and wanted to get over it, it would make it easy for them to remember. So slam. The first is stop. So mm -hmm. stop thinking that someone is saying something that they're not saying, which is often something that I see with women, especially women who are going back to work after having children or they're getting a promotion. They immediately think if somebody says something, it has a negative connotation to it. So welcome back to the office might to someone who's coming back after maternity leave sound like, oh, you've been gone for a long time, or yeah. you're not doing what you need to be doing because you have small children at home. So first and foremost, whenever you find yourself going into that negative spiral, stop, big red stop sign, stop going into the negative, 
turn it around and make it a positive. What they mean is not you haven't been in the office. What they mean is you're a multitasker. Amazing that you're here. We miss your energy. Great for you to be back. Love it. The L is listen. Listen to what people are saying and don't create a story that doesn't exist. So similar to stop, what you want to really do is listen to the actual words that someone is saying and don't add anything else. The A, and this is probably going to hurt for some people when I say this, but accept that there are no gold stars as an adult. You have to give yourself a gold star for living the life you want. Don't look around for someone to give you a gold star for doing a great job at work or doing an extra load of laundry at home. You are the only person who's in charge of your path. So accept that there are no gold stars. And one of the biggest things that I like to say when it comes to slamming down your imposter syndrome is the M, which is make your point and don't back down. I see so many people try to talk themselves out of things once they've said something because they feel guilty for being a little too assertive or confident. If you know that something is correct, make your point and don't back down. Thank you for coming on Wake Up With Marcy. And where can we find you, Lydia, and uh, your book? So I'm on LydiaFinette.com. That's my website, but I'm also all over Instagram at Lydia Finette. So follow along. I have a really fun life. I spend a lot of time taking auctions. So you get a lot of behind the scenes footage of glamorous events in New York and all over the country. So I can't wait to connect with you. Awesome. Awesome. So good to have you and good luck with everything. And thank you for helping us to move towards more confidence (laughs) that we can all can use that. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. When we come back, we learn about Lunalis, one of my favorite skincare lines. Now we are going to talk about skincare with one of my favorite lines. Joining me is Najat Benyahia, the co-founder and CEO of Lunalis Cosmetics. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So first of all, I just want to say this serum is amazing. I use it every single day and the moisturizer and I absolutely love the product. Thank you. Thank you. It's been amazing. So first of all, what inspired you to create this skincare line? Oh, it just, it just, I, I was not planning on doing a skincare line. It just happened. Um, as you might know, like we, uh, after the discovery of prickly pear seed oil, it just happened. Our, we, when we lost our mother to cancer, my sister and I um, traveled back to our home country, uh, Morocco. Mm-hmm. And um, while we were there, we met these ladies that they were working uh, picking the fruits like prickly pear seed oil and we spent some time with them mm. and um, I noticed that their hair was healthy and the skin was shinier given the condition it was summer and the heat you'd expect everything to be yeah. dried out right. so they told us it was prickly pear seed oil and I was amazed at such a plant can have uh, so many skin benefits so my my sister and I decided to partner with these ladies and uh, create Lunalis, a symbol of uh, resilience and uh, strength, and also to help these women and create some jobs for them. You know, amazing, so. amazing. What a beautiful story. And I'm sorry for the loss of your mother. Yeah, I think it was, I was not, as I said, I was not planning, but it, I felt like it was our calling. And yeah. at the same time, I kind of resonated with the plant. Yeah. It, imagine the plant can thrive endlessly in the desert without moisture and it still uh, produces uh, amazing oils, precious oils that is rich in antioxidants, fatty acids, vitamin A, vitamin K. And, uh, and also I, like, I was feeling like, uh, I would say, uh, I, when I want to say so, it's like something that is harsh from the inside and still tender from the inside. I felt, I was feeling, I just felt connected to the plant myself. Yeah. It was like, and also we did it to honor our, our mother. Of course, of course. So, yes, like you're talking about a calling. Yeah. Something happened, you lost your mother, and then you go back to Morocco, and now you become connected. Like, right, it, it, it's almost, did it seem like it was something like, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Yes, like, I was right? asking, like, yes. The reason, yeah. it, like there was kind of no reason, but yet there was a reason. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. So 
you call that the hero ingredient, yes. the prickly pear. Yes. And how exactly does that help us? Because I, like I said, um, I get compliments on my skin all the time. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and uh, I know, I mean, on Instagram and all the places that I see the women that use your oil and they, they rave about it. Yes, true. So, so how is yours different? Like how does the prickly pear ingredient make it that much different? If you think prickly pear seed oil is a rare oil, uh, actually it takes 1 million seeds and 36 hours of manual labor to create, uh, to produce one liter of mm -hmm. the oil itself. Mm -hmm. And the oil, as I said, contains fatty acids, amino acids, vitamin K, and uh, antioxidants. So in the antioxidants, it's good for free radicals mm -hmm. for uh, that creates uh, wrinkles. Yeah. And you got fatty acids, which stimulates the collagen production. Mm -hmm. And you got vitamin K, which does uh, help with under eye circles and pigmentation. Okay. And also it, um, you got vitamin E. It contains the highest amount of vitamin E than any other oils on the market. Oh, wow, wow. So let's talk about the products that you have, all the different products. Sure. We have the oil, which is multi-purpose. Uh, you can use it as a primer before your makeup. You can use it as just by itself. You need hydration, or you can use it uh, to boost your moisturize, um hydration with the cream. And we have clay mask that has saffron. It's got a prickly pear as well. It has three type of clays, and it's got um, pomegranate oil. It's actually good. It's, you can put it on only for 10 minutes and it gives you brightness, it tightens, it firms the skin and also it removes all the impurities and uh, it gives you a nice bright canvas if before. You can use it twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah, you can 10 minutes and you can add, uh, it, it works very well with the oil, you know, after okay. that you put the oil. Just kind of prep your skin, you know. I love it, they I love it. And that's cream? The cream, I mean, This yeah. is the moist, uh, the, the cleanser. cleanser. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's pre-lunched. It has probiotics, and which is good for the skin. Okay. And it has also oils that moisturize it. We want it something to cleanse the makeup. At the same time, does not strip your oils, so yes. it hydrates. Very good. And it does take the makeup off. Yes, it does. Okay. But and it's what is gentle. This? Is that for your it's eyes? The eye cream. Yeah. It yeah. contains uh, algae, marines. Everything is vegan. Okay. So yeah, it helps with dark circles and moisturizes and the skin, and it, it prevents wrinkles. And so who is the skincare line for? Is it for more mature skin or anybody? It's for anybody. Anyone. For, for, it's for anyone, for people that wants to address certain type of uh, wrinkles that already existing or the one that wants to prevent their skin from aging. It's just right. like a prevention. It's good to start skincare at early age. This it really it, is. Yeah. I mean, tell these young ladies out there like it, it's yeah it's, it's to better start. to start early right than late and it's uh, you're protecting your skin and also we're planning on, we're still working it's been three years we're working on uh, SPF to me SPF is number one because the sun is the enemy of the skin the Some sun people is don't the know. enemy so you must have an SPF I yeah. mean I do not go out with an SPF 365 yeah. days a year SPF yeah. well, is you a have must. gorgeous skin thank you I'm and in my 40s by the way so. yeah we well, look amazing <laughs> and the décolleté is so important Thanks. a lot of times we forget the décolleté yeah. so let's also talk about the holistic approach that you have to wellness yes um, the saying it goes you are what you eat is the mm -hmm. same thing you you are what you apply our skin a lot of people don't know that the skin is the largest organ and it absorbs anything we put on it yeah. so imagine the, all the toxins out there that we get exposed to on a daily basis plus uh, like our skincare is uh, free of toxins, uh, does not contain no uh, parabens, no uh, uh, fragrances. Fragrances, when we see something smells good, we like it, but the, say, the fragrances are not good at yeah, all for the skin. Yeah, I would it, think so. it causes premature skin and it does cause pigmentation and it um, breaks down the cells. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, if you want something that smells good, make sure it's made out of uh, uh, essential oils instead of. Uh, uh, right. synthetic Perf perfumes yeah, that are made perfume. in the lab to mimic the natural smells you know so if someone wants to buy lunalis like where can we go uh, you can buy it through our website uh, lunalis-cosmetic.com or you can buy it in amazon and uh, we're also on very shop and uh, flip well i online. just have to say i am so grateful that i found Thank your you. product absolutely love your skincare line Thank you. and um 
I wish you nothing but luck. I love the beautiful so story behind it. Thank you. And uh, the packaging is gorgeous. And the best part is the product is amazing. That works. You know, we want something nice with the packaging, but also we want something well, that yeah, works. Yeah, it looks know. pretty, but it definitely, it, it does what's do inside job. works, <laughs> yes. right? It does its job. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on Wake Up With Marcy and thank sharing you. with us. Thank you for having me, and uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. And Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm delighted All right, guys, to be go here. out there, and you've got to try Lunalis. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in, and a big thank you to my incredible guests, professional athlete and author Gabby Reese, global thought leader and author of Claim Your Confidence, Lydia Finette, and Najat Benyehia, founder of Lunala Skincare Line. Keep in touch with me on Facebook and Instagram. Be kind to yourself and kind to others, and I'll see you next weekend. Mm -hmm.